never really planned on being a physician when it all started out. In fact, um, when I was younger, I actually thought I'd be a builder because my grandfather was a builder. But then I started selling houses and it really wasn't that satisfying. So about that time, I went to my doctor and I said, what can I do to stay healthy? And what his response was is that, come back when something's wrong. He couldn't tell me what to do to be healthy. And I knew not to smoke and I knew to exercise. I knew those kind of things, but I knew there was something more and I was a bit frustrated. So as time went on, I eventually made it to medical school. And in medical school, I thought I would really find out the things I knew to be healthy, which I didn't. I did internal medicine residency. I did a cardiac fellowship. Still, I did not get those answers. It so happens that I was into trail bike riding, mountain bikes. So I was doing this mountain trail, it's actually over at Pontiac State Park, which is actually pretty close, and there's a very steep hill that they call Spill Hill, of course. So I was riding down the hill feeling really good, and I rolled my bicycle down the hill, probably a good 15 or 20 feet. It felt like 100 feet. I got to the bottom, and when I got to the bottom, I was really scared. So I checked my arms, I checked my legs, and I felt my body, and I said, okay, okay, I'm not paralyzed. But then I got back, and my back was destroyed. I could not do anything. I couldn't do any of the high-impact things that I used to do, and I just started the yoga thing about a year or two before. I said, you know what, this is how I'm gonna fix it. Turns out there was an instructor that came from Colorado, her name was Jamie Turner. And she taught a style of yoga called Anusara Yoga, which was very precise, very alignment oriented. I went to her workshop on a Saturday morning, and by Saturday at 12 o'clock, I knew that I was my back was gonna be better because I learned something that was so effective. In time, that allowed me to have a model for healing. And now it's even better than it's ever been before. In fact, I'm blessed every day with a, with a back that feels great. And I created Sit, Stand, Stroll out of using this model. What really gets me going is when I can be part of the process to help you become your own healer. Imagine waking up every day expecting to feel great, expecting to have energy. In fact, you do it so often that it would feel odd not to. You, you wake up with a smile on your face. You want to do something. You've got all the energy you need. And your habit is to pick up the healthy food. Your habit is to go do your exercise. Your habit is to sit down and meditate for 10, 15 minutes. You do your sit, stand, stroll. You do these things because that's your habit. It's what you do because that's just what you do. Hello, I'm Nancy McCocken and welcome to Living Karma Yoga, uh, a program that brings you the best of you know, what yoga has to offer from posture to pranayama, which are breathing techniques, to meditation, mudras, which are hand positions, channeling energy in very specific ways, to um, lifestyle issues and travel and nutrition and so very, very much more to help you take your yoga off the mat and into your lives, to help you live a life that of richness, peacefulness, uh, abundance, and it's a life that you so truly deserve. My guest today is Dr. Michael Dangovian, and you've just seen a clip um, of him talking about his, uh, his life and uh, his practice, and he's gonna to talk to us today about a program that he has developed um, healthful evolutions and in this book he has detailed something that he calls sit stand and stroll which is uh, a yoga practice that you can do anytime anywhere and forever it's not something that you need to be physically active about you don't have to be uh, a gymnast you don't have to move into contortions it's based on the underlying premise that yoga is a peacefulness it brings um, stress reduction and relaxation and it helps us live longer and it helps us 
evolve continually into better human beings. With him today is uh, Nicole Martin, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, she is an integrative health coach through the Institute uh, for Integrative Nutrition. She's a personal trainer with the National Academy of Sports Medicine uh, with a specialization in corrective exercise and in performance enhancement. She's passionate about helping people understand that sick, broken, and tired should not be the status quo. And um, she's partnered, is that correct? Partnered with yes. uh, Dr. Dangovian in the Wellness Training Institute. Dr. Dangovian has been helping people for over two years, working with patients in a unique way in integrating yoga, meditation, supplements, and education into his traditional cardiology practice. His passion is giving people both the knowledge and the tools to take control of their own health and pass that gift to others around them. And Mickey, I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, I met Dr. Dangovian either in a yoga studio or at a family party, I can't remember which. It seems like I've known him for years. Um, he's a wonderful human being and uh, is very dedicated to helping people feel better in their lives. So can you tell us about the Sit, Stand, Stroll program? Sure, Nancy. Um, sit, Stand, Stroll evolved over many years. I've been in practice since 1991 as a mm -hmm. uh, cardiologist. And I have what's called a blended practice. Maybe I blended practice as I integrator, I use complementary and alternative measures that many people don't choose to do. So one of the things I started earliest with was yoga and supplements. So over the time I had been incorporating the principles that were outlined by Dr. Dean Ornish. Mm -hmm. So you know who Dr. Dean Ornish is? I do. Is, of I'm course, not sure so. that the, the, our audience knows. So. Well, Dr. Dean Ornish was the first person probably in traditional clinical medicine that proved that you could actually reverse a chronic disease process, and he did that with yoga. Okay. So now that might sound sort of strange, like how does yoga, how does twisting yourself into all these different positions um, allow you to reverse heart disease? But what he did too is he said, I'm going to take the principles of yoga and I'm going to reverse, call it reverse heart disease, but he called it lifestyle intervention. And, okay. he, and he created something called the Lifestyle Heart Trial. It was published in 1990. So what they did is they used yoga-based pra um, practices, but they also used a low-fat um, vegan diet, mm -hmm. and they used stress reduction, exercise, and obviously quitting smoking and things like right. that. They compared it to another population of patients that were doing the best of what medicine had to offer at that time, so the traditional model. And what he proved is that you could actually reverse heart disease by looking at cardiac catheterizations, which is something that was never done before because before what we used to do is rely on symptoms or rely on certain kinds of tests which were a little bit ambiguous but it was felt that the cardiac catheterization which is basically an angiogram where you uh, slide a catheter through your arm or through your leg up to the top of the heart inject dye in the arteries you can see on an x-ray movie you okay. can see what the narrowings look like so he proved beyond the doubt you could reverse the heart disease but he also proved that you could reduce symptoms at the same time one more thing that he demonstrated was that the people that were doing usual care, or the best that medicine had to offer at the time, is that the other, the usual care group got worse. Okay. Which was a really interesting thing. So not only did you get better with yoga, you all, uh, and not only did you feel better with yoga, but if you didn't do yoga or you did the usual care, you were most likely to get worse. He did a follow-up study mm -hmm. five years later and showed that you were twice as likely to have a cardiac event if you were in the usual care group than if you were in the yoga group. So it was very, very profound. Very um, groundbreaking. Spotting. It was amazing. Yeah. And, what, and again, this is 1990. So quite a, quite a few years ago now, it seems like yesterday. But, and so what I try to do is I try to integrate that into my personal um, cardiology practice. Mm -hmm. So every Monday I would have a group that I would, I would um, take and we would practice some sort of yoga-based um, practice mm -hmm. and we would do that every Monday and I would teach them things that I needed that I thought that they needed to know but realized that I, did, I was learning along the way and so when I did that I noticed that people were having trouble with the yoga part of it if we will and when we think of yoga we think of the positions and the postures right now I can tell you and in, in, you already know so for the people out there uh, yoga is also about how you 
hold yourself in the universe. Every moment of our lives. Every moment, every aspect <laughs> right. of our life. Everything that we do is right. technically yoga. And that was something that took me quite a few years to figure out. Mm -hmm. So I was learning along with my patients over the years. So over the last 25 years, what I was able to do was able to find out how could I connect with people that had no interest in doing yoga, but they were interested in feeling better and reversing okay. heart disease, which is completely different when you think about it. Because do people, if I put a sign up there for my patients, say, how many people want to do yoga with me every Monday, I would get nobody. Right. Maybe one or two and people. And people are afraid of yoga. They think of it as something bizarre or weird or some religious thing. So it's exactly. much better to not. So over the years, I was able to develop a program and uh, a program that was e people could connect with very easily. But even more important than that, it helps them with their backs. Okay. In fact, for a long time, I called my program Healthy Back, Healthy Heart right. in order to get more people to come. And it made me realize that this is how we can keep people from needing walkers and wheelchairs when we get older. Oh, okay. That's so, beautiful. Yeah, it was really, it was quite, a, that was a, a groundbreaking moment for me because I realized that it's really about how you stand in the way and how you breathe. Okay. And it really boils down to that simple. So I created a process where we can do this sitting, standing, and walking where your body literally becomes lighter with each every breath. Your body becomes more grounded with each every breath. So is this a breathing practice aware. then, primarily? Sure, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, it's breathing, <laughs> but it's alignment and it's movement and mm -hmm. it's everything. It's mm -hmm. awareness. We, I, I like to say we act on things. Awareness, connection, and transformation. It's about acting out again and again and again. That's beautiful. And so as your um, Healthful Evolutions, and I, I attended a dinner that uh, the Wellness Training Institute hosted last week. And one of the things that I was really struck with was that the name of the program is Healthful Evolutions because we're always evolving into a more healthy way of living, which I found really, really profound, so which goes along with uh, breathing every moment. Of Absolutely. Our lives. We're, we're, we're a product of our habits. Right. So we call them the habits of health. Okay. So our habits determine who we are, mm -hmm. how we turn out. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, when we start to realize that we're just a pro, you know, our habits, then we start to notice what our, our habits are. So that's the awareness. Right. So now if we can ground ourselves, create a connection, if you will, with an understanding. So our habits are how we eat, mm -hmm. how we stand, mm -hmm. how we breathe, how we think. Our thinking, our thinking patterns are just habits. We've cultivated those habits. So whether we know it or not, we've chosen these things. Now you can choose something intentionally, say I want this versus that, or you can choose things by default. Right. And most people live by default. And that's a difficult way to live your life because now you're stuck with whatever the universe brings you versus if you live with intention, mm -hmm. now you can actually make decisions on how you want things to turn out. Right. Right. So how do you bring that into the program and how do you introduce that, say, sit, stand, and stroll? When I read the book, it seems like we're sitting and we're strolling and then we're standing. I can't remember. May I I got it wrong. Well, um, like with all yoga practices, the, the um, basic pose is mountain pose or tadasana. Okay. So it's a standing pose, right? So the way that it works is that you start to first understand what you're doing already. So what I ask people to do is take a big, deep breath. Mm -hmm. And most people are what I call face breathers. And if you notice, when, if you take a deep breath, and if, if, at home, if you're doing this, just do it where you're sitting. Now, people that do yoga always have a different way of breathing. But just for a second, just breathe from your face and take a big deep breath. And notice what happens is that your, your um, center of gravity migrates up your body. Mm -hmm. And so it migrates little by little by little. So that happens at a very slow pace. And it happens over months and years and decades. And so what happens is we start as children, we're very grounded. In fact, if you see a little, uh, little baby or toddler walking across the room and they fall, where do they fall? They fall right on their butts. Right. But where does an older person fall? Forward. Right on their head. Oh. Because they're top heavy. Oh. And it's a result of what I call face breathing. Because when you start to breathe and you raise your center of gravity again and again and again, it just very incrementally migrates up and mm -hmm. migrates up and migrates up. And then pretty soon, this is where you hold all of your 
energy, if you mm -hmm. will. But what we do is we ask people to start with their feet. So engage around the ankles and the feet. And when you do that, if you just squeeze your ankles, if you're standing, you'll feel your feet pushing into the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, if you squeeze your ankles and then your calves, now if you squeeze it's specifically your calves, now your calves, ankles, and feet will push into the floor. Then you go ankles, calves, thighs. You pull your belly button very hard into your spine so now you can actually integrate and then you feel your, uh, feel your spine and squeeze your muscles around your low back, your middle back, and your upper back. And so what happens, it literally pulls you into the ground, but it also draws your diaphragm down. That's really beautiful because I know I have tried to teach breathing practices and often I use the arms in order to help people understand uh -huh. where their torso is. But what you're saying and implying is when we bring our awareness down, our mind goes down and our breath goes down. Uh huh. And so it's not about, okay, learning how to breathe differently, actively, intentionally breathing differently. We're shifting our awareness and, and shifting the awareness. We shift the gravity and we shift the center of gravity and we shift our breath sort of automatically without focusing too much on but the mechanics. And, and the automaticity is really the key to it because when you start to engage in a sequential pattern, you do this again and again and again, what will happen is your body opens up automatically. It cannot do anything else. So if you really think about it, we want to be fully engaged at all times. Right. We want our bodies fully engaged. We want our, our minds fully engaged. We just want to be engaged in experiencing life. Right. When we become distracted, we become lost, then that's obviously a problem. So when we have this complete engagement, now we actually have a physical practice that we do over and over again. And it becomes part of our life. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and so we integrate that into how, and we awesome. integrate that into sitting and walking, which is actually quite easy. Believe it or not, it's actually an easy thing to do. The reason why I had to create this is because realize that when I, and so let's say 1995, I'm sitting there in a room, I have 10 or 15 uh, people that are my patients. So these are not yogis that we have right. advertised with and we don't have a yoga sign sitting out on the street. We have pa patients that I've literally talked into coming. I literally had to beg them to come to my class. They weren't like, they weren't screaming, you know, let me in first. They were saying, they were screaming, let me out. And so well, I had to I give really them something. To? Yeah. So what would happen is that first we would start with belly breathing. Right. And so we would always try, and belly breathing was how people are always taught to breathe. Right. And I'm not a big fan of belly breathing because what it does, it, it creates a problem with the low back. Right. Because people extend their bellies forward. And I had somebody actually hurt their back doing that, which was really interesting to me. Now, the, patient, the person had a terrible back to begin with. Right. But it was my mind, I said, why should this make anybody's back worse? Absolutely, this should not happen. So how do we make it better? So I had to revise it. And so by integrating the principles of yoga that I learned from uh, uh, particularly Anusara mm -hmm. yoga, which is a, a method that I became very um, attached to for a very long time, these principles of alignment made it so your back always got better. You could not hurt your back, so when they, if you, if you did it carefully and you did it methodically, there's no way that you would injure yourself, and I've not had an injury since. That's really beautiful, and the thing that strikes me about it is that very often when we teach beginning students yoga and we teach them to breathe, we teach them to do it lying on their back so that they can be aware of the belly breathing. I'm not a fan of belly breathing either because I have a tendency to be lordotic anyway, and uh -huh. so that shifts the belly forward and I can feel compression in my lower uh -huh. back. But when we teach breath seated or lying down, we're eliminating that downward awareness to the feet and the grounding through the legs that you have actually incorporated into your program. So in some ways we're dis disabling our students, it oh, I seems agree. like. Yeah, I think, I, I agree, I mean, for a long time. And I, I know I, this I, is getting esoteric yoga talk, right, but right. it's interesting. Well, I, I would never put a patient on the ground for right. a long time. I mean, you have to be a very advanced, I think at least an intermediate practitioner to go on the ground in the first place and without using props right. to do that. I think that it's, because again, alignment's everything. Mm -hmm. So now I have these patients that are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, sometimes a 90 year old. How do I get them to connect with yoga? 
And so that's why this had to work this way. But not only did it work, because it actually worked so much better. So when, even when I'm with experienced practitioners like yourself, they're often amazed because it, it, it's so simple. It is simple. It's, it's revolutionary. Simple. Yeah, it's so simple. It's hard to believe, <laughs> and so it, I'm excited every time I get to share it. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And so you have 90-year-olds and 80-year-olds with kind of stooped shoulders. Are you able to get them to stand up? Oh, a little sure. Straighter? Yeah. I mean, there, it takes a little while. They have right. to do, but it's you have to see somebody's face that hasn't been able to take a deep breath for years. Right. And then all of a sudden, I mean, you may not have taken a deep breath since you were a young child. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you're able to have this huge excursion. And not only that, when you take the breath the right way, it actually straightens your spine. And we don't straighten your spine. We don't bend it back. We extend your spine. Right. So it's all about extension. It's all about expansion. Because when you look at the universal laws of nature, energy is expanding. It's always, always expanding. So if you're in alignment, it can't do anything else. Alignment is the key. So it's like when we eat the right foods, your body can't help but heal itself. It's, it's just the way the universe works. If you eat the wrong foods, it can't do anything but do what it does. Our bodies are designed absolutely perfectly. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole, how did you get involved with this? Uh, well, when we first met and he told me what his vision was about just helping people and what he'd already done with his patients and wanting to expand more, I was instantly on board. It was exactly what I was doing on my own with people individually. And then as far as sit-stand stroll goes, I kind of heard it just like you did right now in this kind of a context. and. It made perfect sense when he was explaining it to me. And did he teach it to you? Did you try yeah. it? And how yeah, did it feel? Yeah, he taught it to me and I felt great. But what really changed it for me was when I went to his class. So like he was saying, he's been teaching his patients for, for over 20 years. And on Monday nights, he would do this with his patients. So I went to the first class and there was like 40 people in this room. Mostly, I mean, 60s, but mostly probably 70s and 80s, even probably somebody in their 90s there. And I just watched everybody like stand up and their body structures change like throughout a two hour class. And they, watching them connect to their breath and their body when when you first walked into that room, it wasn't a bunch of people who you saw to be out and active and walking all the time and very mobile wow. or going to any sort of class. So when I saw it firsthand, I was like, wow, it's something that people can do when, like you were saying, yoga can be so intimidating to some right. people. So. That, in, that enrolled me right away. <laughs> this is incredible because we're almost out of time already. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that, took, that was fast. It was, it's hugely fast. So is there anything you'd like to add to what we've discussed so far? Well, I mean, there's a lot that I could add. <laughs> but um, I would just like to say that it's, it's about every single moment. So if I wanted to say something about sit, stand, stroll, what it really does is it teaches you you can become engaged in every single moment of your life whether you're sitting, standing, or walking. And it even carries over to even when you're sleeping. So getting back to the concept of health evolutions, your body can get better and better and better. It never has to, um, you can be better at, at um, 70 years old than you were at 60 years old. You can be better at 80 than you are at 70. We can continue to improve. It's never too late to um, keep moving forward. And that's a really good thing to end with, I think, because we have this concept in our culture that as we get old, we have to deteriorate and we have to shrink and we have to, our health gets worse. And genetics plays a part in this some, sometimes. But this is a really hopeful thing to know that just because, say, and I'm 71, you know, and, um, you know, if you're 80, 85, you don't have, you're not resigned to slumping over and letting gravity draw you down. And then it doesn't take a lot of muscular effort. It doesn't take going to a yoga class. It's a very simple understanding of awareness and that regardless of how old we are, every single breath can be vibrant and wonderful and, and exciting. Every moment can be wonderful. So I love this. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, for more information on Karma Yoga's schedule, go to www.karmayoga.net. We very much look forward to seeing you in class. Dr. Dan Govian and Nicole can be reached at um, the Wellness Training Institute. It's wellnesstraininginstitute.com, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
well, buy this book. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> it opened my eyes. I've been teaching yoga for over 20 years, and this opened my eyes to a simplicity that I hadn't recognized was available. So thank you very much for well, coming. Thank you for yep. having us. Thank okay. Bye-bye. May the long time sun shine